Okay, peoples. I went to the Caravan Camping and Touring Super Show at Caulfield Race Course, um, as I did last year. I'm going to show you a few different things. I was going around trying to uh, work out about getting a particular sort of hot water system. I uh, couldn't find the one I was after, and then started talking to one of the salespeople, and they said, I think the one you mean is called a Gelco. And then he pulled his iPhone out and he showed me. Uh, you, you just done Google search, image search, and, and showed me it. And I said, yeah, that looks exactly like it because I was having trouble explaining. I couldn't remember the name that I knew it as, um, but I sort of explained it and he brought it up. And he said, we've actually been contacted by him about a week ago and in you know, a month or so uh, we're going to start stocking their product most likely. Um, and that would be at uh, this joint. That's, um, they're in Fern Tree Gully. Um, they sell a whole circus worth of stuff. They're known as the, uh, well, yeah, RV Superstore. Um, and they got everything from air conditioning systems for caravans, heaps of toilets, washing machines, and all little Chinese odds and sods, water pumps, flipping hot water systems. Um, and there's one I looked at on the internet that was... Um, I think they had a, a five liter and a ten liter. I think they may have been a fifteen, um, but it was a like a ten liter tank hot water system, uh, thousand watts. So I could easily run that off a generator. I could actually run two of them. Uh, that was three hundred and fifty bucks. And they had other ones that were like a gallon a minute, um, and they were oh, they were damn high. They were like two thousand eight hundred watts, and the other one was three thousand four hundred and fifty. Um, so yeah, with the three thousand four hundred and fifty one. Uh, that was basically a box that would mount on the wall, um, and that's like your 15 amp, 240 volt. Um, and yeah, it's just a very small box, and it's a water inlet, um, you know, hose fitting, and like a, a threaded, you know, fitting, and another one for the outlet. Um, yeah, and just like a power button or something like that on it. And the other one, the 2800. Uh, what one was a, um, you know, you can use, it's a bit pushing it really, but you can sort of use it with a 10 amp power point, um, although it's pushing the limits, and they, that was just like, it was absolutely tiny, it was basically just like a tap, and you had like the, your, you know, spout that come down like that, your chrome spout, and then just a knob, and you turn it on, and this thing was only, oh God, five inches wide, and about three inches around, and that was the whole hot water system in that um, with a little knob on the side that you'd sort of, you know, a little chrome, lovely looking little chrome thing, you'd turn on, bang, hot water would come through. Um, but yeah, so at least it looks like I'm going to be able to get the one I want at a shop nearby me so if things turn to hell I can go back to the shop and get a replacement uh, as opposed to just buying it offline which I don't like the idea of. Now here's another one that um, there's one I should mention, it, it's called Exception and it's a vacuum cleaner 600 watts 240 volts uh, and really seriously it looks like the little fart dust buster ones you know the little tiny ones I'm saying about that you go and you know little handheld things it looks like one of them um, but it's exceedingly powerful and I was a bit annoyed that he didn't even have a brochure there uh, for him um, but yeah mains powered and they've got two hoses and the uh, foot you can connect on the end to use it as a normal vacuum cleaner or you can use it as a little sucked vacuum cleaner by hell the thing has some extreme amount of power um, yeah very good if you live in an RV or something like that um, so yeah uh, but here's another thing that I should show and I'm sure there's plenty of people who would be quite happy if Troy received one of these um, you may know a little bit about what they are, but they've only just brought them into Australia this year, and they've had them for a number of years in Russia and in parts of Asia. And they're basically a ball. And you get hold of this ball, which is only 1.3 kilos, which I think is like, oh, is that like three pounds or something? Um, and you throw it in, and you just, just chuck it in there, and within three to ten seconds, it goes off. And it showed them putting them on... Um, car engines that are caught on fire, um, throwing into burning dumpsters, and they throw it in, and the next thing, car warp, and this big shitstorm of blooming grey smoke goes everywhere, and it's a certain sort of sulfur 
nerves, something or another, and it basically sucks the oxygen out of the air and the fire goes out and it can cover nine square meters. Now I am, they're $150 each and I think the show price is $100 or $120 or something. I am seriously thinking of using one of these in my own house. Uh, and as it shows there, you just stick them in a cradle next to fuel, oil, anything else that you think could be a risk. You just sit it near there and it can go off. And it's not like a fire extinguisher where you've got to deliberately run around. you just got to place it there and if it gets hit by flames, kaboom, off she goes. Um, and because of the way the wall is in um, one of my rooms here, which is basically the wall becomes, well, has got no palings in a higher up area, um, I could put one of these in my roof space without any real risk of excessive pressure build up or anything when one of these did go off. And I think I may put one of these up in my roof space so that if there's any stupid bird nest or mouse nest or any carry on against me stove pipe and something goes to hell up there, i.e. things light up, this thing will just go kaboom and all the grey smoke will blast out. But it won't blast into my room, but it will blast out into the other room um, where the wall palings are missing right up high, uh, which means that there'll be no pressure built up in the roof, but there'll be a heap of smoke, which may put in some fire out. Um, I mean, imagine me getting up on a ladder with a blasted fire extinguisher while bits of burning ceiling are falling down because I've got a plywood ceiling and then trying to, well, it's a cement sheet one around the stovepipe, and then trying to, you know, put out a blooming fire. By the time I got the damn ladder sorted, the blooming fire began too badly. So I may highly likely buy one of these and stick it up in the roof space. But that's one I think Troy could do with. Now, these, I was pleased to see these little ones. Um, I'll show you the basic one. These are lithium polymer battery packs. These are exceedingly priced. Um, and most of them have a basically a um, solar charge controller built into them. Uh, this one's 12 volt only and it's about 800 bucks worth, or 850 bucks, uh, with $800 show price. Um, you can only get 12 volt out of that. Oh, they got USB charging as well. Um, but that's about 8 amp hours for $800, not cheap. But it gets better. This one here is about, oh, what was it, like 1200 bucks or something? Something like that, maybe 1300 uh, And this is about 26 amp hour. Uh, and it's got a, you know, it's like a briefcase set up with a solar panel on the top. Another one there. Um, and this has got an inverter in it and uh, all that and tells you exact battery output. Um, it's, yeah, I'm pretty certain you can... Um, Oh no, you got solar panels there. I don't know if you can add more in or what. You probably can because you've got all these different options to charge it up and all that. Um, but, yeah. Oh no, no, it's saying 16 amp hour. I've seen 16 amp anyway. Um, I thought that was about 26 amp hour, but... Uh, yeah, 16 amp hour, it says down the bottom here. But of course it cuts out. Uh, it's got an inverter built in, a 150 watt one. Um, and it cuts out uh, basically uh, when it gets to about 15% to save you completely discharging it. Um, and yeah, you got your little meter comes up there and it looks like that. So yeah, uh, but that one's not cheap. This one really isn't cheap, but this one is a lot better. You've got not just a couple of solar panels here, there's something like five panels and you can fold them out and they all sort of just constantine are up again. And then this cable here, it, you can barely see, that is actually, you, you can pull it out and it's like five metres of cable. So you can stick these five solar panels outside with your five metres of cable and leave this in your tent or your RV or whatever so it doesn't get wet. Um, and then this one is something like 48 amp hour. Um, and, you know, you can run fridges off this without a problem and once again you get your little, um, you know, inverter and all that sort of business. Um, oh, 350 watt inverter this time. Um, and yeah, same thing again, you get your little, what's his name there? Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you can use your fridge for quite a while off that one, like a, a 12 volt fridge or whatever. Um, 
Yeah, but that was about, oh, this is exceedingly expensive, it's like about $2,200, $2,300, something like that. It is not cheap at all. Um, yeah, could have been around 2000 hard to remember. A lot of these things I don't bother putting the price on. Oh, this is a beauty. I've seen one like this. Uh, it was a different brand, but this is pretty much the same sort of thing. Um, you get your... your 36 volt 10 amp hour battery there. Now the other one I think had the motor here, but this one, the motor is actually there on the front hub. Uh, and anyway, that's a 250 watt motor and you can get about 30 to 32 kilometers on the flat out of this thing. Uh, oh yeah, built in Sweden too, this one. Oh, there's two models. There's one that's got more gears and one that's got less. Uh, the price... Oh, I forget now. It was like over 2000 and a bit under 2000 or something like that. Um, but yeah, they're uh, not a bad little device. Um, you have like a plug in the side. They've got like a little power pack, and I couldn't get out of him what voltage the power pack was. But it's like a little 12 volt um, plug, like you see on. Oh, you know, one of the little round circular ones, a bit like a laptop one uh, that goes into, you know, the side of the uh, thing. And, of course, it's got its, its own charge controller in there with the battery and all the electronics. And you just plug a basic um, thing -o into it, a basic um, transformer plug pack into it. Yeah. Uh, so I keep going here. Oh, this is a beauty, this one. Um, all it is is just these little blooming clips, and they're like 50 bucks worth. Um, but in all that, what it is, you get your awning, and that's your arm for your awning, and there's your awning, and there's your overhanging flap for your awning, and you stick it into these little plastic duvers, and it basically curls it up like a little, well, like a shape sort of like that. And then you've got the bucket, and you hang the bucket that all the clips come in off the end, but the bucket also has a hole on the side to put in your hose fitting, and then you use normal half-inch garden hose to run it out to wherever you want, and he says he uses the, um, you know, the nice one, the garden hose that you can basically drinking quality uh, one, and just runs it into his inlet tank in his RV. Um, so he fills up his, his tank in his RV. But that was 50 bucks for that. I mean, you could probably do it for 20, but I mean, it was, you know, this bloke's uh, been the one who invented it. Um, yeah. I'm seeing more and more of these ones that are knockoffs of Honda inverters, but these ones didn't quite look the same. So these may be sort of their own brand. These ones did actually look like a Honda, but this one here, the outsides, the carry handle is all very, very different. Um, but anyway, it was a inverted generator, and uh, so I had a geezer at it, and I, I picked um, up the your, your 2000 water one here, uh, 2000 peaking, 600, uh, 1600 ongoing. Uh, that was quite easy to pick up, actually. It was, it was a lot lighter than most of the generators I've ever picked up. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, 80 cc four-stroke motor in it, I think. That one's 174, no, 171 cc. That one's 3100, and I think it... Yeah, 2,800 continuous. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, beauty. NGL had a flexible um, amorphous solar panel that you could roll up and just looks like a... Their one, the NGL one, actually looks like the back of fridge magnets stuck on fabric. Um, and these ones here are bought out by Red Arc. Uh, and then they've got it, and there it is there. Now, these are $2,200. They are not cheap, but as you can see, just fold them up like that. Um, and they sort of looked a lot more a bluer colour uh, than the NGL ones. The NGL ones, too, were a lot bigger than this and only 80 watt, and this one's 108 watt and smaller than the NGL one. And the NGL one was 1865 or something like that. Um, but yeah, these are uh, little amorphous ones. <laughs> I 
also have all the different charge controllers, but you can use your own charge controller, I think. Pricey, but they always intrigue me, these flexible solar panels. Oh, quick bait. This is a beauty, this one. This boat here, there was another mob, I'll tell you what, you can tell the difference of marketing. They were sen uh, spending the whole time assembling and disassembling this, and they had flipping tons of people hanging around and watching. And there was another place that sold the same sort of thing, different brand, and they just had one sitting there open, and they weren't on the PA trying to talk people into, have a look at this boat, da 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 They're just standing there, and they basically had no one looking at them. And it was the same product, more or less same sort of... Um, thing, but basically these are foam inside uh, flat plastic, and your bottom is two halves, and then you got a half. Uh, I mean, your bottom is two quarters, and then you got another quarter here, another quarter there, and the whole lot just goes. You pull this the arse end out of it, and then there's some sort of a beam that's under his seat here, or something like that, um, and I think the front bit or something like that, and you pull them all out, and then you just go whack, 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 just like that. And these here are all flexible seams, and it folds up into a quarter, you know, basically the same size as the side there, and that's it. And then you've got, you know, your little end panel there, and a little bar that goes across another bit there, uh, and they'll take something like a 10 horsepower motor or something like that. You can get about 300 kilos or 325 kilos of people, I think it is, 40 kilos of cargo, and then a 35 kilos of motor or something like that. Um, not bad at all. Yeah, they are there just putting the front piece in. Yeah, they're, they're not bad at all. They're, but they, you know, made a real point of trying to market it, and the other mob who was. Um, oh, there it is compared to a, a windsurfing board and a surfboard. Yeah. Uh, the other people weren't there on the PA, didn't have glossy brochures, and they had nobody there, and it was the same product. But I mean, he got this thing out, and I mean, he had it set up in like 15, 20 seconds. I mean, you couldn't believe the way it was, the way he set it up so well. But yeah, basically it's foam-filled um, panels. Not bad. Uh, price? Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> Might be a grand or two or something. Now this mob here, uh, I've got the whole Fleming catalogue. I think they're owned by J-Car, or whoever owns J-Car also owns this mob. Um, Road Tech Marine. And uh, when I went and... Uh, went to this place and that, and they told me about the gel car. I was asking these guys, do you have any hot water systems? And I noticed they had a lot of stuff, which is the same stuff I saw in J-Car, uh, which is the where Troy went to get the electronics um, when he, well, set up the solar system um, up in Coffs Harbour. Uh, and basically, almost everything I've got is also J-Car stuff. But, yeah, a lot of the stuff here is J-Car stuff, but... They also have, I mean, J-Car's really just electronics enthusiasts, but this one has a lot of stuff involving uh, boats and RVs. And, I mean, you've got bilge pumps um, and, you know, stuff like that. And, yeah, a lot of bits and pieces uh, that you know, I sort of looked at. And, and I reckon there's more accessories that this mob has that you don't really see um, in J-Car and that, but I was interested in the amount of blooming RV pumps this place sells and bilge pumps and water pumps, uh, whereas J-Car, like, <laughs> I just don't have any, uh, except a stupid little 12-volt power pump like I've got on my uh, backup shower system. Um, but, yeah, I more or less talk this mob into looking into getting the gel car hot water system, and I'm not joking. Um, we had a long talk there anyway. Uh, what else have we got here? Oh, this is a ripper. I was uh, stunned by this one. I couldn't. It's a beauty. Um, it's basically a spa system, <laughs> and they had the the black one there running, um, and flipping ripper. I tell you what, with a generator you can have a spa without a problem in the world. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the one there they had going. Uh, you got a little bit that pops up from the side here. And what you got, it's it's very well sought out. The whole lot folds into, oh, absolutely bugger all. I mean, it looks like a bag that's probably three foot by two foot by two foot, something like that. Um, and you got the bubble pump here for your sauna. 
and it's also got the water heated electrically. Now you can heat this up to 42 degrees Celsius, which from what I gather is about 108 Fahrenheit, 109, something like that. Um, yeah, and that is really seriously warm. Um, now, the bubble blower in this, you hit this little knob or this extra switch and it pumps this thing up. And this is like a big blooming blow up pool that you have, like the blow up waiting pools you have for kids. It's essentially like a really high pressure big one of them. And the blower that does the bubbles there will pump the size up and then once she's pumped up, you turn it off and then you, you know, flick the switch over or the change the tap or whatever it was, uh, fill it up with water and then turn her on and, and you know it's all digital all press button you just beep 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 like that turn your temperature up and down um, and then turn it on and it's there circulating the water around and if you want to get it to warm up for a while you've also got a little blow up thing um, which you, I think you just blow up yourself that goes over the top a little biscuit that goes over the top to keep the warmth in while you're waiting for it to warm itself up because uh, I think it takes like 10 minutes to warm up or something like that, but I thought, you know, fantastic, like, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, 10 minutes set up, heats to 42 degrees, um, 136 bubble jets, 1,200 litres of water, uh, oh, water filter cartridges in it. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I was intrigued by it. It wasn't too bad at all. Um, so, yeah, there was another uh, brochure I had that sitting in my room, but um, it was only on uh, air conditioning systems. I might pause and I'll just go get that because it's got a pretty good one in it. Here we go. Um, this might not be one that you've heard of, this brand, but I'll tell you what, they've been around for years and years and years doing um, tractor systems, bulldozer systems, and I remember in Western Australia we had a old Land Cruiser Ute built in 1981, big 4x4 Toyota, um, big old diesel banger, and it had an air conditioner built in, aftermarket air conditioner, because they never come with air conditioners, and it was this brand, uh, Denso, and you might also see Nippon Denso, and I don't know if they were amalgamated, or they sort of uh, one on the other, and then they changed back the Denso name, or whatever, or they broke up the company, or what, but yeah, now it's just known as Denso, that's an underbed reverse cycle air conditioning system. And then there's this one here, which is your rooftop one. I mean, both of them have rooftop units, but this is apparently the slimmest one there is. But have a look at the rating on this. If you can see it. It'll go to 48 degrees Celsius heat. This thing will still work at 48. I mean, that's so hot you don't want to know it. Um, that's sort of Arizona summer temperatures from what I gather. Um, that, oh, I don't know, it's probably around about 120. Uh, no, it could be, yeah, it could be like 118 or something, or 117 or something like that Fahrenheit, but that is seriously, seriously hot, 48. It never even gets that around here. Uh, that's more out in your desert areas um, sort of temperatures that we uh, sometimes get, but I was quite impressed to see that one's actually built with that sort of a, a uh, rating. But Denso have been around since I don't know when, probably the 70s or something like that, maybe even the 60s. But um, yeah, they will work without a doubt in the world. And this is this is real quality. This unit, so. This ain't some Chinese rebadge heap of crap if I've seen it in machines that were made in the early 80s um, as aftermarket. But they've been really specialised in aftermarket air conditioners, bizarre air conditioners, earth-moving equipment air conditioners being, you know, one of their big things. Um, and, yeah. So that's about it, folks. Um, yeah. Yeah. I got a good look at a number of other campers and got a few ideas. My gosh, I didn't know how compact some things are. And uh, I've even seen a few truck campers, a bit like the one Troy's got, but uh, modern day one, complete with a shower and toilet and the whole shebang built in. And, and yeah, I got a few ideas for tiny houses myself.